All right. Talking about mooks. 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 Although, you had a picture of the day. Do you want to explain? Yeah, let's talk about the picture of the day first. Yeah. To frame. <laughs> to frame the to frame discussion. The yeah. Yeah, so I was on Shorpy. Uh-huh. And uh, <laughs> when I was on Shorpy, which is this kind of 100-year-old blog, supposedly, that does all these old-school great photos, they had this wet glass photo. Mm -hmm. And it is of the hanging of the four conspirators in Lincoln's death. So Booth didn't act alone. So Booth was with uh, three other people? Well, four people helped him. Four people in embedded, addition. In gotcha. addition to Booth. So if you put oh, yeah. up the image... Let's put up this picture so you, you can actually, see. <laughs> you actually can see the hanging. Yeah. And that was so crazy because if you go on Shorpy, and it's the picture of the day today for Shorpy, you look at him and you get to one point where you mm -hmm. just see the bodies. Right. And then you see all the Union troops around. Yeah. But it's just thinking about the, kind of that point in history. And that was like all blood and mm -hmm. guts. It's and like what I hardcore violence. Is there a transition between that image and what we're talking about? <laughs> no, I just about like today? the idea just of like... the image of the day. <laughs> and I liked how it was like it's convenient. <laughs> I liked how it was so like gruesome. I wondered right. if these you know were like instructors and how we're all hanging together, you know. We're well, hanging together. As, as, uh, yeah, as the mook if mooks don't go well. <laughs> hanging know, in the mooks. Where, where we'll be. Yeah. Well, funny, the mook <clears throat> name, one of the big criticisms around the mook is the name. And yeah. I actually like it because I had a friend in high school named Mookie, uh -huh. mm -hmm. and that was the nickname we called him. So I just well, think I was thinking Mark Haber. I, well, I think of Spike Lee. Yeah, so. <laughs> that's right. That's the other Mookie. <laughs> Where's my two fifty, Sal? <laughs> that's right. Exactly. Well, and, and why I, did you got no brothers on the wall? I'm not sure who. I think it was. It was probably George Seaman who wrote. You know, one of the problems is it's got. You know, another. In Spanish, it means mucus, and yeah. you know there's, a, there's another connotation to it as well. So yeah, I actually um, had never even heard of mooks until last year in DS 106. Yeah. Yeah. And that was my introduction to the whole idea and framework of what a massive open online course is. Well, they've been around for a few years. I mean, yeah. this is 2008, I think, or even as early as 2007, because Wiley, I think, had one of the first really open classes. And one of the mm -hmm. things that's interesting to me is. There have been a lot of open online courses. This is not traditional or unique to the MOOC. Right. Mm -hmm. But what is, is the fact that this idea of massive, and we could argue about whether that's how important that is or not. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know. But the thing is this kind of invitation sense. Yeah. And then Alan Levine has talked about this, like this opening up and saying, hey, come take the course. Come right. create a community around it. Like we're seeing that with the Stanford's artificial intelligence course now. Mm -hmm. They're right. opening it up. They're inviting it. Um, the University of Illinois at Springfield, mm -hmm. that was a big invitation. And that's what I think Siemens and Downs and Cormier did a really good job of, is like inviting people to take this course as a kind of research space when they did their first MOOC. Right. So I think that was really fascinating. Yeah. And, you know, there's the idea of trying to, I'm actually trying to find the quote that I, that I saw, but this, it's just kind of this experimentation. You know, I, I haven't found the answer, I think, is, is what Siemens says. Mm -hmm. You know, follow me. Yeah. Instead of saying, instead he's saying, I'm experimenting, you know, join right. in. I don't have all the so, answers. Right. Learning is a messy <clears throat> process. Why try and pretend that you've packaged up this beautiful thing? You know, feel free to fail and this, in front of everyone and, this and idea learn something of, in the process. This idea of all the answers and having all the answers was kind of the spark of a debate, a little bit of a debate, between Wiley and Siemens mm -hmm. about, like, you know, whether MOOCs were going to be the model right. for mm -hmm. the future of online learning. And, you know, I agree with Wiley. I mean, no, it's not going to be just one thing. It's not going to be just the MOOC. Mm -hmm. But I do think that um, both Downs and Siemens' experimentation with the MOOC as far as the work I've done and experimented we've all done with DS-106 has been yeah. a blast. Right. Kind of throwing it out yeah. there and dealing with it. Like, there is something yeah. there. And well, and, well I was just going to say, and like you said, it, in terms of whether massive even matters, I don't know that it does because I wouldn't consider DS-106 this massive open online right. course experience. Mm -hmm. There were certainly quite a few people who participated regularly with the online thing, some that came yeah. and went, but in terms of overall numbers, who cares? That's right. You know. And one of the things of DS-106 versus some of these other MOOCs we'll see is that was a lot more scalable. Yeah. It wasn't huge numbers. Like, I mean, Downs and Siemens are victims of their own popularity. Like, they have right. thousands of people sign up. Right. And I'm sure that artificial intelligence class at Stanford will, too. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be hard to scale interaction, scale kind of participation and all that. Right. That's a lot of work. Well, it's funny that you mentioned the, the scalability issue because I think people are very concerned about that, you know, yeah. the, the learning management system coming into into existence because of the scalability of, of this right. stuff. Mm -hmm. And, I, you know, I think the scalability kind of, if you start to treat this as as a 
as a situation where you've got this giant community of practice, you've got all kinds of interactions that can happen on, on these sub-levels. You mm -hmm. know, you've got these sub-communities that can, that can occur, and it happened with DS-106. Mm -hmm. You can have this peer kind of um, review, or you can have this peer learning that goes on that's separate from the instructor. Absolutely. And I think the instructors are so worried about managing this whole thing, if you just kind of let these subgroups happen. Yeah. Um, and develop out those communities of practice. I think you're in you're in good shape to to quote unquote manage it. Yeah, and mm -hmm. down to Siemens having good about letting go and yes. saying, look, you you're to. on your own. You have to do you this. Where we can't. But the thing is, is on the other hand of that is, you know, whether people stay engaged because of interaction, because of that community that's built up out of it, mm -hmm. is another question. And how do you foster it? Because you can't completely divorce yourself from that interaction as a professor, I would think. Right, right. Like, you have to be a part of it, or sure. there has to be a way for an outlet for it, or kind of... So that's really a tricky thing right now. And mm -hmm. I, there is no answer. Is explore with me is the right approach. Yeah. But how do we get at that spot where, you know, we get the interaction? Which brings me another course to mind, which I think is interesting, is Boone Gorgas mm -hmm. actually... And I like to call him gorgeous because he's gorgeous. But he recently <laughs> tweeted about um, or wrote a blog post about him doing teaching a WordPress course right. at Queens College with no sense of it being open or online. Mm -hmm. But the idea he's, and I commented, I said, I would love to take this class. And here's a great class where you have already a community built in. Right. It can be intimate enough that we can actually share and learn from each other yeah. rather than just kind of in, I like the kind of small, intimate, here's a great idea for a class. And plus me and... Martha and all of us can model classes. We want to do something like WordPress mm -hmm. on what he already did. Right. So it's really this awesome professional development opportunity. Right. Yeah. And I was gonna. I was just gonna say that's just one of many that you were saying that you want to yeah. do. I mean, there's so many now that are coming out, and that's the biggest problem with me is I want to do it all, and I know I'm not gonna have the time to do it sure. all. And there's yeah. ones where it's like even. The artificial intelligence one, yep. I, it's sort of like, I want to do it just to see how that becomes a model for other exactly. courses, you know? It's not so much even at that point. Maybe it's just, you know, because we're educational technologists, but it's this idea of, like, I want to take that just to know how they do it. And, I mean, that, it's, That's right. it's still early mm -hmm. days, I guess. But I think it's, it also fosters a model for learning going forward yeah. in that you, you dabble in the things that you want to you you immerse yourself in the other things that you're really interested That's in right. mm -hmm. and and you know get that engagement naturally as opposed to having this artificial you know here's this course here's what it's going to entail that's right and and go from there and so, that's the beauty of it the idea that you don't have to take the course in the same way right. exactly exactly I, you know I, it, the thing that i always worry about and and you kind of experience it in in ds 106 was this idea that you know the students are kind of some of them take the approach that they're they're in it for themselves yeah. Um, and they're they're in to, to get the grade. They're in to, to do what they think a traditional course should be. Um, and it, you know, if we can get this idea out of the way that it's that they're not competing against each other, okay. it's not a competition. That's not what education is. It's right. it's this idea that you're 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 learning with others. Um, everybody can get A's kind of thing right. if, if they're if they're willing to put in the work and and to have those those conversations to make those connections and that's really I think that's a great point because it's that competition that often can make it seem toxic like Absolutely. then you have this idea of what did right. you get I mean this invidious that's comparison right. yeah why didn't stuff. I get the grade that he got because and I we've thought still I did gotten much. some of that in DS exactly. Six, exactly. which it seems amazing <laughs> to me yeah, but I'm dealing with some of it right now you know it's mm -hmm. amazing well yeah I was talking about this idea and this kind of gives the professional development and, you know, we've seen people in our, I mean, Noyce Professor wrote about this already in terms of Zach Dow and stuff with professional development, but I do. I want to take Gardner's Network of Networks, mm -hmm. so his whole one about the kind of professional development and the digital imagination. Right. I'd like to take Boone's WordPress class because I need yep. to get my WordPress ninja exactly. going. I'd like to take, uh, go along with the edge of Mo or the MOOC EDU, or no. The change. The change one. Yeah, yep. the one with uh, Siemens and Downs. That's, yep. that's the, the mother of all MOOCs, I think, was the way he phrased <laughs> yeah. it. But the thing with that, and this is interesting, and I'd mm -hmm. like to see what um, others see, think is, the thing with that is interesting is that is you have a new speaker every week, right. and like you wonder how you're going to bring it all together, and you wonder how, you, you know, is that a kind of like IT conversations, mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. how do you bring in the interaction? How do you foster it? Because I understand the interaction has to happen amongst the people. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think they're thinking about it. You know, they're working with Georgia Tech on that. 
Okay. They're thinking about it as, you know, this is a resource that other courses use. Mm -hmm. But then how is it more, then it's more like an OER than a MOOC, you know, because the class almost depends upon the interaction. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So if, if they're just, they're, if they're just lectures that, that they're going to discuss, I mean, how do you kind of generate any kind of activity in that, art, uh, yeah. you know, that's not artificial. That's mm -hmm. right. Um, I don't know. Yeah, and then the fact that they're doing it in Illuminate. I mean, it right. raises a question. I mean, That's right. we kind of, this is our experiment to get away from Illuminate a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's kind of yeah. what we're working through. DS-106 radio, but also this. I mean, Illuminate, to me, brings back all the worst parts of the classroom, <laughs> yeah. right? Right. That's right. So. I, I think, you know, any of those, it, it, it reminds me of, you know, it, the, calling it like the blackboard of, of kind of communication devices. It's, yeah. it's this, it's this thing that's designed for massive amounts of people and, and I don't know if it necessarily gets at um, you know serving the needs of, yeah. of, of what that is and it, and it may but it's just to me it's just kind of another I you know <laughs> this this thing that we're doing right now right in many ways kind of gets at it and we, we've got a uh, you yeah. know maybe a stream that we're looking at that that yeah. gives us feedback right um, that's right it's it, it's not it's not the way yeah it's it's a way and I think it's a better way and more people need to work on the other better ways yeah, to kind of and get And I don't at think that. doing it in Illuminate completely compromises the process, no. but it's also kind of a mindset of getting away from Blackboard, getting outside of those spaces, right. and well, kind of distributing it like the idea of the MOOC is. It's a distributed space. That's right. I mean, the MOOC EDU, Jeff Liebau has been doing some awesome stuff mm -hmm. um, for that Springfield stuff. I mean, he's been getting uh, Skype interviews on with people, mm -hmm. Skype discussions, mm -hmm. doing that just like we did with the Google Plus, experimenting with that, how that works. He's just been going crazy with, uh, I think he's using Ustream. Yeah. But like having a steward like that, mm -hmm. to kind of steward a community and get right. people talking and kind of, I mean, that's one of the things you really got to think about with this space. Well, I like I like George Siemens' terms it, that he used it, the learner concierge. It's like it's the, yeah. it's a place where students can go to kind of address the confusion. And it, you know, it probably couldn't be much more than a than a discussion forum, yeah. but but to kind of frame it in a way that that students you know get that extra little assistance to kind of help them along. Because there is yeah. a, there is an issue with MOOCs about whether a student is even prepared to to take advantage of this kind of learning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the kind of arguments that uh, David Wiley brought up against, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, not for every learner. You know, some right. learners are going to have a problem orientating themselves in this space. And Wiley's right, but at the same time, I don't disagree with Siemens that they're going to have to be in this space. They're going to have yeah. to exist yeah. in this space. And they're, they're going to have to struggle and they're going to have to, they're going to have to fail in it yeah. in, in many ways. Well, and I think, you know, the argument that it's not for everyone is sort of the same thing that comes up with when people mention Khan Academy and they sort of say, yeah. oh, Khan Academy can be this model to where everybody, nobody needs to go to college anymore. Nobody right. needs to go yeah. to university because you can just go online and grab that stuff. Well, that's not for everyone. I don't, yeah. I don't think, right. you know, there, there are certain people who either by situation need to do that because they're in a third world country and that's the only way they're going right. to get a decent education or people who would prefer to do it and learn better that way. Yeah. Yeah. But if you see, if you see learning as, as acquiring a skill, yeah. that's a way to do it. Right. If you see learning as going through and, and making these connections and, mm -hmm. and having those connections mean something to your learning, mm -hmm. then you know, that's not, not going to be anything. It's not going <laughs> to yeah. happen. Yeah. Right. And if anything, I mean, what is happening with these MOOCs in some way is that we're reimagining the way in which we produce yeah. educational yeah. resources. Yeah. I mean, and that's really cool. It's like where it's becoming the part of the process, not something right. alien to it. it mm -hmm. The process is, is yeah. the key that we're talking about here. There is no, there is no showing your work in Khan Academy. Yeah. You know, there yeah, is no right. showing what the struggle was when right. and how you came up with this. That's mm -hmm. a great point. So, And that's a real big difference. And yeah. it's also a community of people you want to work alongside of. Because mm -hmm. that's going to define your experience in a classroom here, in a university, right. Right. or online. Right. And that's why I think one of the models I liked about the S106 is you had a great group of people just going along into it, mm -hmm. like locked in. And I'd like to see if taking all these MOOCs over the next um, semester if that is the case yeah. and how we can help build it. Yeah, right. exactly. Yeah. Well, I think we're running out of time, but I think we covered just about everything we wanted to. Great. All right. All right. We'll see you all next time. Thanks, guys. DTLTT for life. For life.
Thank you.